you've got to stop doing it. Unintentionally making the same mistakes that pushes, even scares great men away. But it doesn't have to be that way. In this video, we're going to talk about the most common ways that women unintentionally push men away, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to turn things around and keep the men you want. Don't go anywhere because we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borello and I'm a psychologist and a relationship coach. This channel is all about helping you build great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love. If you're interested in making your love life the best part of your life, start now by clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you aren't missing anything. Okay, on to the accidental ways that women scare men off. So imagine this scenario, you met this perfect guy. He's smart and funny and attractive and very interested in you. You start getting to know one another and you go on a date or a few, and just when you're starting to really like him, poof, he disappears on you and leaves you wondering, why does every guy I like seem to drop off the face of the earth after a few dates? And what can I do to prevent it from happening again? Well, if you're engaging in one or more of the following behaviors, you're probably sabotaging your chances of keeping a great guy around for long. Oh, and make sure you watch all the way till the end because I'm gonna tell you how to turn things around and prevent it from happening again. So without further ado, here are the behaviors to look out for. Number one, you're over communicating and over texting. Keeping in regular contact with the person you're dating is usually really sweet. It's like you're sharing your day with someone, almost as if they're keeping you company and making your day more enjoyable. That is, as long as the communication is balanced, meaning that he's initiating the conversation at least 50% of the time. On the other hand, if you're the one that's usually contacting him, it won't be long before he'll begin to start seeing you as insecure and clingy. So answer these questions. Do you get anxious if he doesn't respond right away? Does your heart drop when you realize he hasn't texted back for a while? Do you start worrying that something's wrong? If so, that's a problem. And if you're double and triple texting him without a response, that adds to your anxiety and raises the clinginess index tremendously and he will undoubtedly feel your insecurity and neediness and that becomes very unattractive. Number two, you are way too available. As I've said in other videos, one of the most important traits that men find attractive in women is independence. In other words, men are attracted to women who have a full life, not to a woman who comes off as needy and clingy. Look, I understand when you're excited about someone, you want to spend as much time with them as possible, but you must make sure that you are keeping up with the life you had prior to meeting him. And you can't stop doing the things that you were doing before you met him. So make and keep plans with your girlfriends and keep your schedule busy. This goes a long way towards helping him to see you as a high value woman with an exciting life. And when you do that, he is going to want to be a part of that life. And when he isn't, he's going to feel that too. So yeah, if you have your own life, men will find that independence sexy. It reminds him that he isn't the center of your world. So therefore he has to put more effort in to get to spend time with you. So keep active with the friendships and activities you had before you met him because that's what made you who you are. Remember, your relationship started because of who you are. If you lose your identity, you will likely lose a relationship too. Number three, you constantly stalk his social media like a private detective. Have you found yourself scanning through his old pictures, checking his timeline, or even checking out the profile of every single person who liked his latest post? Does that sound familiar? And you might be thinking, yeah, but he doesn't know that I'm looking. Well, he might not know immediately, but your behavior is going to give you away. It's going to show him sooner or later. How? Well, it influences your interactions with him both consciously and subconsciously. It has an impact on your mood, on your energy, and on your spirit. Or you might unknowingly mention or craft a, a question about a particular friend of his that will let him know that you've been snooping. It's not a good practice and it feeds your insecurity and jealousy. Here's another example. You find yourself checking to see when he was last online and then you start worrying about why he hasn't reached out to you or responded to your last communication. I can't begin to tell you how many times people I've heard saying, I've seen that he's been online, but he hasn't responded to my text. It becomes a habit and it can become an obsession to constantly check to see what they are doing or who they're communicating with. You start analyzing and checking to see if you can understand his relationships based on his history of liking someone's post. And then you start to feel anxious or even jealous that he liked another woman's post. And 
you start to make assumptions about things that could be completely untrue and without a doubt, it will manifest in your daily communications and interactions with him. And it will have a negative impact on your new relationship. Your fear, your anxiety, your insecurity about something that you know very little about will come out and he will notice and it will be a huge turnoff. Number four, you have commitment or marriage goals too soon. I know it's difficult to not think about the future when you really like someone, but at the same time, it's important to cool your jets and let the relationship evolve naturally and not even consider committing before you've really gotten to know someone. So take that goal out of your mind because when you make something a goal, you start planning and living in the future and then you're constantly measuring your progress towards that goal. That means that you're not really being present when you're with him. Everything you do is unconsciously slanted towards accomplishing your goal and even worse, everything he does that makes you worried about your goal is going to make you upset and ruin the dynamic between you two. So for the first little while, just enjoy the time you spend with each other as much as you can and let whatever will happen between you happen. Otherwise, you could wind up unconsciously pushing him away without even realizing it. Number five, you need constant reassurance of his interest. It's normal to want to know how your significant other feels about you. However, constantly asking them how they feel for reassurance is a problem. If this is you, then you probably ask multiple times. Are we good? Are you attracted to me? Are you sure? You probably also need to have constant affection from them, such as kisses and holding hands and stuff. This happens when you have this perpetual feeling as though things are on the cusp of falling apart. It happens when you are always on the lookout for the signs that things are going to go wrong and that the relationship is about to be over. If that's happening, it's because it's difficult for you to believe completely that your partner values you and the relationship, so you need reassurance over and over again that yes, everything is fine. Yes, we are good. This insecurity and these mini accusations that something's wrong all take their toll and quickly turn from annoying to active resentment. This can become overbearing for the other person and will likely lead to the demise of your relationship. Number six, being irrationally jealous. Jealousy in the absence of any real threat is not sexy. It's scary and it makes guys feel like you're gonna pull a fatal attraction on them. And besides being scary, irrational jealousy shows buried insecurities and diminishes attraction rapidly. Men are attracted to women who have a sense of inner confidence and are generally secure in themselves. If you show signs of jealousy, such as freaking out if he wants a boy's night out, men pick up on this incredibly quickly and will run away even faster. Now, the most important part of the video. Why does this keep happening to you and how can you turn things around? For most people, there are two reasons. Number one, it happens when you start thinking of this new person as the one, or when you start daydreaming and romanticizing a relationship that doesn't even exist yet and may never exist. So instead of being able to be present and engaged in this moment, you're stuck in a future where you're assuming so much. You're daydreaming and fantasizing of all the amazing times that you will share. And that causes you to elevate the importance of this relationship a great deal. And when you put too much into this outcome, you become too invested in a future that you can't control. And that causes anxiety. And number two, when you really like someone, when you really want someone, the stakes are higher. The level of importance you attach to that person is higher. And your level of anxiety and fear of losing that person goes way up. And when that happens, any insecurities that you may have about the relationship, about dating that person, it manifests in the interactions with him. And guess what happens? He feels it. He notices those insecurities and it lowers your values in his eyes and makes you seem needy or clingy and even desperate. And then before you know it, he's running for the hills. That's why you must stop looking to a relationship to reassure you. Remember, feeling secure comes from inside of you. And if you don't feel worthy, if you don't know your value, it won't matter how smart, sexy, worthy, or attractive your partner tells you that you are. It won't stick and you'll need more and more reassurance to temporarily fill you up again. That's why you must strive to feel okay within yourself. You need to love yourself and accept who you are. Then you can be fully accepting of the love and affection your partner directs towards you. Again, it comes from within, not from looking to your partner at every turn for reassurance to prove you're okay. 
But as we discussed before, practicing self-love in the context of a new relationship is often easier said than done. When we want another person, we often do things that we think will win their affection. And in doing so, we often engage in behaviors that are anything but self-loving. The good news is that like any relationship, strengthening your relationship with yourself and practicing self-love is something that you can learn to do. So if you're interested in learning more about practicing self-love, click here to watch this video now. And if you found this video helpful, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.